Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening. I'm Kisina Jimurad. Welcome to News 10 and the top stories tonight. His Majesty the Sultan and Yang Dipertuan of Brunei Darussalam receives in audience the Minister of State at the Ministry of Defence, United Kingdom. Her Majesty Ruli Raja Isri receives an audience the High Commissioner of Canada to Brunei Darussalam. His Majesty Sultan Haji Hassan al Bolkiam with Zadin Waddaullah, Imni Almarhum Sultan Haji Omar Ali Saifuddin, Sa'dul Hari Waddin, Sultan and Yang Dipertuan of Brunei Darussalam. Today received an audience Baroness Annabel Goldie DL, Minister of State at the Ministry of Defence, United Kingdom. The audience ceremony took place this afternoon at Istana Nurul Iman. Accompanying Baroness Goldie were His Excellency Richard Lindsay, High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to Brunei Darussalam, and Ms. Trish Wilson. OBE, Head of International Policy and Strategy Indo-Asia Pacific. Also present were Yang Berhormat Behin Datu Laila Raja, Retired Major General, Datu Bruka Sri Haji Awang Halbi bin Haji Muhammad Yusof, Second Minister of Defence and Major General, Pengiran Datu Bruka Sri Aminan bin Pengiran Haji Mahmud, Commander of the Royal Brunei Armed Forces. Baroness Goldie is in the country for a three-day introductory visit from the 24th to the 26th of September 2019. This is her first visit to Brunei Darussalam since she was appointed as the new Minister of State at the Ministry of Defence in July 2019. While in Brunei Darussalam, Baroness Goldie also took the opportunity to make a working visit to the British Forces Brunei in Syria. Her Majesty Duli Raja Isrin, Pengiran Anak Haji Soleha binti Almarhum Pengiran Pemanja, Pengiran Anak Haji Muhammad Alam, this afternoon received an audience the High Commissioner of Canada to Brunei Darussalam. The audience ceremony took place at Istana Nurul Iman. Her Majesty Duli Raja Isri received an audience for Her Excellency Janet Stovall, High Commissioner of Canada to Brunei Darussalam. Her Excellency presented a letter of credence to His Majesty the Sultan and Yang Dipertuan of Brunei Darussalam on the 18th of September 2019. More than 180 people, including business figures, have registered for the local business development program. More on this at first, this excerpt of His Majesty's data. The prosecution continued its case against Ramzida binti Pihen Datuk Kesuma Diraja Retired Colonel Haji Abdul Rahman and Haji Nabil Daraina bin Pihen Udana Khatib Datuk Bruka Seri Setia Ustaz Haji Awang Badarudin in the High Court today by calling six witnesses from Bank Islam Brunei Darussalam BIBD. The six witnesses were bank tellers who had processed cash withdrawal transactions made from the official receiver's OR accounts under the first defendant's name. Each of these tellers elaborated on the process for withdrawing cash transactions over the counter at BIBD. Based on the evidence, it was clear that multiple cash withdrawals were made by the first defendant from large numbers of OR accounts. Again, the court was shown cash withdrawal slips containing signatures of the first defendant and in some instances, copies of the first defendant's identification card photocopied at the back of the bank documents were also exhibited. Simon Farrell QC suggested to three of the prosecution witnesses called today that two other BIBD staff collected the cash withdrawn from the OR's accounts which they Process and these monies were then handed over to the first defendant who was waiting outside in her car. One of the prosecution witnesses did not agree with him and confirmed that he handed over the cash to the first defendant herself. 
The other two tellers agreed that the cash was collected by BIBD staff but did not see the cash being handed over to the first defendant. The defence informed the court that they do not object to the contents of the statements of another six sets of BIBD tellers. Jonathan Kaplan QC read out the statements in court which relayed the transactions process for the cash withdrawals made by the first defendant. All the statements confirm that the tellers processed cash withdrawals from large numbers of ORS accounts. The withdrawals were made by the first defendant as they confirm that the signatures on the cash withdrawals corresponds to the authorised signatory in their records. Though their statements state that the account passbooks and filled in cash withdrawal slips were given to them in advance either from another BIBD staff from the debt recovery department, they also confirmed that all the cash withdrawn were handed over to the first defendant herself, which can be demonstrated through the signature she, uh, she appended in front of them to acknowledge receipt of such cash. In one instance, Jonathan Kaplan QC exhibited a BIBD deposit slip showing a cash deposit of $93,000 into an account belonging to Jati Transport Sindiran Berhad Beribi Gadong. It is the prosecution's case that the $10,000 notes used to deposit the account originated from a cash withdrawal made by the first defendant from OR's accounts. The prosecution also exhibited to the court photocopies of $10,000 notes made by a BIBD teller. The copies were made as record to later report to the Authority Monetary Brunei Darussalam, AMBD. These $10,000 notes were given to the first defendant as part of the cash withdrawn by her on 5 December 2017, the last transaction which she has done from OR's accounts during her tenure as a deputy official receiver. The prosecution also played in court an excerpt of CCTV recording from BIBD main branch in Bandara City Begawan. The video shows a time when the first defendant approached the bank teller counter for a transaction. A bank teller who was one of the witnesses called by the prosecution today was seen counting stacks of cash. The cash was later placed into a white envelope and handed over to the first defendant which she then kept in her handbag. La lastly, it can be seen that the first defendant signed on a piece of paper in front of the bank teller. The matter will continue again tomorrow morning at 9 in the morning for the continuation of the prosecution's case. Jonathan Kaplan QC and DPPs Haji Suhana Haji Sudin, Haji Suryana Haji Radin, Dayanku Didi Nuraza Pingenan Abdul Latif and Muhammad Kamarul Afian bin Abdul Rahman appeared for the public prosecutor. Simon Farrell QC and Sheikh Nordin Sheikh Muhammad appeared for the defendants. In exploring the potentials of the digital economy, the world is facing new challenges that require new approaches. One of the challenges is on digital divide. According to the ITU State of Broadband 2019 report, a second level digital divide whereby gaps continue to exist even after infrastructural access is addressed. These gaps refer to other embedded structures such as limitations in skills, literacy, use empowerment and availability of relevant content. This was said by the Minister of Transport and Info Communications this morning at the Local Business Development Programme 2019 LBD, the next level. How to leverage the digital revolution? Yang berhormat Datuk Seri Setia Awang Abdul Muttalib bin Pehin Orang Kaya Seri Setia Datuk Perduka Haji Muhammad Yusof then said that this is the time for the local businesses can play a very important role in complementing the efforts of the government in addressing such gaps by offering more services and products via digital technologies which with this way can be the motivation to generate new interests and sustain users participation in the digital economy. In further reducing the apparent gaps in digital affordability and accessibility. In February 2019 this year, the government announced the consolidation of the network infrastructure of all existing telecommunication operators in the country under what we call a newly formed company called Unified National Network Sindiran Berhad, UNN. With this new policy development, the ICT industry is on its way to provide a more competitive and innovative packages of services spurring the developments of Brunei's ICT sector, which is critical to creating an ecosystem to support the digital economy and ultimately the country's digital transformation. In this regard, it is imperative 
that we prepare our business community and also the government to be ready and well equipped for the digital economy. Yang amat mulia pengiran muda Dr. Abdul Fatah bin Duli yang teramat mulia Peduka Seri Pengiran Perdana Wazir Sahibul Himmah Wal Wakar Pengiran Muda Muhammad Bolkia Chairman of Binary Bank and his sub that touched on the opportunities and challenges of the digital era According to Yang amat mulia, many of the opportunities are global and include those that impact humanity and future generations and close. 2035 is coincidentally the same year as our Wawasan. Again, the Internet of Things could offer massive improvement. Those who will benefit most financially are those who are first to adopt the many imaginative and innovative ways by which technology can be leveraged to meet the changing demands of modern consumers. The opportunities of the digital revolution must ideally lead to benefits that are good for humanity as a whole. Many of these opportunities are global in nature and include those that will affect humanity for generations to come. Foremost among the emerging opportunities are the application of artificial intelligence and machine learning to address the complex issues of climate change and the use of blockchain to improve data security and to, to facilitate international trade in emerging countries. More than 20 Brunei startup founders and budding entrepreneurs have been given scholarships by Brunei LNG and Baiduri Bank together to enable them to participate in the 2019 Local Business Development Programme 2019 LBD Forum and Workshop held today and tomorrow. More than 180 business figures, corporate executives and government officials have registered to discuss the business landscape in a digitising world. The LBD Forum and Workshop will give participants a better understanding of key aspects of the digital age and gain insight on how their business could best navigate the changes brought by these advances in technology. The forum also highlighted perspectives on different per topics from high knowledgeable international and local speakers including Robert Schaeffer, Schaffner, author and expert on digital transformation as well as Datu Ghazali bin Datu Muhammad Yusuf, chairman of Nusantara Technologies. Twenty-eight students received the Dean's List Award 2018-2019 and four others received Co-Curriculum Activity Awards in conjunction with the University Technology Brunei UTB Convocation Ceremony 2019. The function took place this afternoon at the UTB Library Complex. The awards were presented by Datin Seri Paduka Dr. Hajar Omaiza Binti Haji Muhammad Saleh, Acting Minister of Education. The Dean's List Award recipients are students from the Faculty of Engineering, School of Computing and Informatics, UTB Business School and School of Applied Sciences and Mathematics. Meanwhile, the Co-Curriculum Activity Awards were presented in four respective categories. Introduced in 2015, the Dean's List Award is a recognition for first to third year students who have shown academic excellence. Also present were Dr. Awang Haji Azman bin Ahmad Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Education and Dr. Chin Weika, Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Education. Hajj pilgrims who have recently returned after performing the Hajj in Makkah are urged to perpetuate the Hajj values in their personal lives, family, community, race and country. The call was made by the Deputy Minister of Religious Affairs at the gathering for the Hajj pilgrims of 1440 Hijra 2019 held this morning at the Budex Banquet Hall in Jerudong. Pingiran Datu Seri Paduka Haji Bahrum bin Pingiran Haji Bahar also highlighted the three main points needed to be given attention and and taken seriously by the newly returned pilgrims. Pengiran Datu Seri Paduka Haji Bahrum said firstly is the aspect of personality. Every Hajj pilgrim must continue to perpetuate the religious practices carried out in the Holy Land such as performing prayers within the period stipulated in the congregation and more importantly performing prayers at the mosque. The pilgrims must carry out sunat or commandable religious deeds, beautify oneself with praiseworthy characteristics and repent immediately when carrying out offences or deviant acts. Secondly is the Ubudiyah aspect every Hajj pilgrim 
must make efforts to enhance the quality of their prayer and always read the Quran, be attentive and caring towards the poor and destitute through zakat or tithes, infaq and others. Thirdly, is the social aspect. Every pilgrim must familiarize themselves with mass prayers, caring for orphans, visiting those who are ill, ready to provide assistance in voluntary works and other beneficial community practices. Dan yang ketiga ialah aspek sosial. Setiap jemaah haji berusaha membiasakan diri sembah yang berjemaah sebagaimana yang telah uh, peramba saya sebutkan tadi, menyantuni anak-anak yatim, berziarah kepada orang sakit, bersedia memberikan pertolongan dan bekerja bergotong royong dan lain-lain amalan kemasyarakatan yang bermanfaat. The function was highlighted with a talk entitled Istiqamah delivered by Awang Haji Anwari bin Haji Rawi, qualified da'i of the Brunei Islamic Religious Council, Mu'ib. The talk, among other matters, stressed on the need for Hajj pilgrims to carry out self-reflection of how far the Hajj performed has given a positive effect towards changes that will better make one closer to praiseworthy practices. <laughs> The, at the function, four companies which conducted this year's Hajj package services were given appreciation for their efficiency and integrity in administrating and organizing the Hajj pilgrims. Also present were Nawaf Mazi H. Al Badwi, Deputy Charge to Affairs of the Embassy of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to Brunei Darussalam, Dr. Haji Annan bin Haji Bazar, Rais of Sri Begawan Religious Teachers University College. Kupu SB and Awang Haji Muhammad Sarudin bin Haji Timbang, Deputy Permanent Secretary for Policy and Religious at the Ministry of Religious Affairs. More news after this break. Stay with us on News at 10. Assalamualaikum, saya pengurus perhubungan dari Bank Meskita. Untuk maklumat tuan, kami akan menyaktifkan akaun tuan dalam masa 24 jam terdekat ini. Sistem kami telah mendapati beberapa kegagalan dalam log masuk akaun tuan. Tapi kita jangan risau, kami boleh kembalikan akaun Meskita seperti yang asal. Apa yang kami perlukan dari tuan ialah nama penuh, nombor akaun berserta, password Meskita. Lebih 23 tahun, Yanu Restoran dan Catering memberikan khidmat sajian makanan berkualiti bagi semua acara keramaian seperti perkahwinan, doa kesyukuran dan sebagainya. Promosi kem percuma dengan 500 undangan bagi sajian RM5 seorang. Promosi raja dan ratus sehari dengan percuma 50 serta 10 hidangan menggunakan dom. Yanu Restoran dan Catering sedia memberikan layanan terbaik. Hubungi kami di talian 871-9986-9989-986 dan 880-9986. The Department of Economic Planning and Development, JPKE, at the Ministry of Finance and Economy through the Department of Competition and Consumer Affairs found that the rate of compliance with the Price Control Act has improved in July and August 2019, with only seven and two offences recorded respectively, compared to 22 and 14 offences respectively for the same period last year. However, businesses are continuously advised to ensure measures are in place in order to comply with the Price Control Act. In the last two weeks, in the last two months, JPKE issued a compound fine of five hundred dollars each to three businesses, while another received a compound fine of seven hundred dollars for repeated offence related to selling cooking oil above the set maximum price. The compounds were issued to business premises located in the Brunei Muara district. During the same period, five warning notices were issued for price tagging offences and maximum price violations. Businesses are advised to display prices on items for sale in their business premises to enable consumers to exercise their rights in making informed purchase decisions by comparing prices of goods. Although maximum prices are set for 11 items listed under the Price Control Act, which include cooking oil and powdered infant milk, businesses are encouraged to offer competitive prices not exceeding the set maximum prices. Failure to comply with the Price Act Control Act and its regulations may be met with a compound of not more than $1,000. Repeat offenders may face a maximum fine of $20,000 and imprisonment of up to five years.
For more information relating to price control, the public can contact the Department of Competition and Consumer Affairs through telephone number 223023 during office hours, Talian Darussalam 123, mobile application pengguna bijak slash smart consumer, email aduan pengguna at jpke.gov.bn or consumer complaint at jpke.gov.bn and website www.jpke.gov.bn slash cad. The Ministry of Transport and Info Communications has explained the status of the implementation of cyber security services for the public and private sectors as well as the general public in Brunei Darussalam in efforts to tackle national cyber security threats. In a statement released by the Ministry today, cyber security services are intended to ensure on four significant. First, improve the level of awareness towards cyber security threats in the public and private sectors, especially towards safeguarding critical information infrastructure CII, in Brunei Darussalam. Second, improve response capabilities towards cyber incidents via effective cyber crisis management. Third, improve legal enforcement capabilities in mitigating cyber threats through national digital forensics laboratory services. And fourth, improve the level of public awareness on cyber threats. Meanwhile, three services which will be implemented by the Information Technology Protective Security Services in the Berhad ITPSS, namely Cyber Watch Centre, National Cyber Incident Response Centre through Brunei, Computer Emergency Response Team Brucert and National Digital Forensics Laboratory. For more information on the services, government agencies, the private sector and the public can visit www.brucert.org.bn or hotline at 2458001. More than 20 local entrepreneurs are taking part in the Charity Food Festival September 2019, currently taking place at the Bandara City Begawan Royal Wharf. The festival, which is held until this Sunday, aimed to help local entrepreneurs in enriching, encouraging and supporting them to be more independent and confident in entrepreneurship. The opening was officiated by Yang Berhormat Awang Naim Ben Haji Kamis, member of the Legislative Council, who is also the Pengulu of Mukim Kota Batu. The festival aimed to provide opportunities to local entrepreneurs to showcase their respective products. At the event, 30 orphans from Kampung Kula received donations. The festival organized by AIS Event Planner and Management and Nurbadi Event Management is open to the public from 3 in the afternoon until 10 at night. Every individual is responsible in studying religious knowledge, especially the basic knowledge, and most importantly, is its adaptation and full assimilation in life so that it will light the path of every person. The matter was among the contents of the Hijra New Year celebration special talk entitled Mununtut Ilmu Itu Satu Kefarduan, or Seeking Knowledge is an Obligation. The function organized by the University of Brunei Darussalam Religious Committee took place this afternoon at the University's Senate Room, Chancellor Hall. Present was Datin Dr. Dayang Haji Anita bin Nurul Zahrina, binti pihin orang kaya Laila Wijaya, Datuk Seristia, Haji Awang Abdul Aziz, Vice Chancellor of University Brunei Darussalam. The function ran concurrently with the launch of the Fardu Ain course and Hijrah Camp program aimed at producing independent youths who are proactive and attentive towards the surrounding communities. Meanwhile, the special talk was delivered by Awang Abdul Rahman bin Haji Ajak, co-founder of Al Minhaj Center. The talk explained the benefits of a knowledgeable person and stress that such knowledge will facilitate every individual who practice Allah's commandments as being knowledgeable will ease the heart when carrying out Allah's commandments. Abdul Hadi Muayyad bin Haji Azrul and Nur Aliya Amani binti Muhammad Al Amin, both from Al Falah School, emerged champions in the male and female categories, respectively, on of the second Murat al, al Quran reading competition for primary schools nationwide. The competition, organized by the Co Curriculum Education Department, Ministry of Education, through the spiritual unit, took place this morning at the Islamic Dawah Center in Barakas.
Prizes were presented by Awang Haji Amir Hisham bin Haji Masri, Acting Director of Mosque Affairs. The competition aimed to encourage pupils to study, read and assimilate the Quran in their daily lives as well as expose and instill interest in the students towards Al-Quran. Stay tuned for more news after the short break. Following the spread of a video recording on social media about an individual who was apprehended by severe police personnel at the Air Asia Information Counter, Brunei International Airport, the Barakas Police Station has validated the incident. The Royal Brunei Police Force received the emergency call on the incident at, tw at about 12 noon yesterday. A Malaysian Chinese man, 40-year-old Peng Du, was detained for creating chaos at an information counter when he expressed his dissatisfaction with baggage management. However, the Royal Brunei Police Force is still conducting investigations to identify the cause of the incident. Members of the public who wish information on the incident are requested to come forward and provide cooperation to assist in the investigation. The Royal Brunei Police Force also stressed to the public to stop spreading the video recording of the incident as it might jeopardize the investigation process and give negative implications and assumptions of the actual incident. Realizing the importance of knowledge strengthening in both practicals and theoretical in order to study a certain knowledge is in the objective of an Anaja program. The Raja Istri Pengen and Anak Soleha Girls Secondary Rabbit Religious School in Kampung Katuk organized the second such program with the focus on the topic Mencapai Bintang or Reaching for the Stars. On hand to officiate the program this morning was Haji Rosli bin Haji Muhammad Saleh, Assistant Director of Services and Corporate Islam Studies Department. Various activities were held throughout the program, such as an exhibition of the students' works in and knowledge showcase, as well as quizzes and games to attract the students' interest. A harsh practical competition was also held at the end of the program to further strengthen the participants' understanding on Hajj. The result for successful new applicants of the Technical and Vocational Scholarship Scheme for the academic session September 2019-2020 has been released. Application results can be obtained through Ministry of Education's official website at www.moe.gov.bn or by visiting the scholarship section Block C, 5th floor, Ministry of Education or contact 2380019. Successful applicants are also required to attend briefing session which will be held at Dewan Anaja Civil Service Institute tomorrow, 26th of September 2019 at 2.15 in the afternoon. Several areas in the Brunei Mora District will experience a temporary power cut tomorrow. Let's take a look at the information.
The enforcement section of the Kuala Blight and City Municipal Department has issued a $100 fine to an individual for throwing rubbish at the public area. City Molok Har Harsumaro is holding a green smart card number 51140987 has dumped several trash bags containing damaged umbrella and styrofoam behind the shop number 83 Jalan Bunga Raya Kuala Blight. The individual was given seven days to settle the about and if failed to do so can be brought to the court. First offence, a fine of $1,000 will be issued and $3,000 in imprisonment of not exceeding three months for subsequent offence. An Indonesian female employee has been reported to have run away from employer. The Royal Brunei Police Force is seeking the public assistance and cooperation in tracing the whereabouts of 35-year-old Erwan Ju Judah holding passport number C3367906. Any information on her can be directed to the Murna to the Mara Police Station at 2770140 or hotline 993 or any nearby police station. The Pollution Standard Index PSI reading as of 7 this evening at all districts were overall good. Here are the details. A look at the Nisab Zakat Audi tide rates for cash and property. Moving on to the foreign exchange rates between the Brunei dollar and some of the international and regional currencies. World news coming up next. China's top diplomat, Foreign Minister and State Councillor Wang Yi hit back at tough criticisms from the United States and said the world's two biggest economies should respect each other's interests and cooperate for the mutual benefit and for the, that of the rest of the world. Mr. Wong made the remarks in an address at an event hosted by the U.S.-China Business Council in New York on the sidelines of the annual United Nations General Assembly. Earlier yesterday, U.S. President Donald Trump delivered a stinging rebuke to China's trade practices at the United Nations General Assembly, saying he would not accept a bad deal in U.S.-China trade negotiations. Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi attended the UN Sustainable Development Goals SDG Summit in the capacity of President Xi Jinping's special representative at the United Nations headquarters, introducing China's efforts on achieving sustainable development and saying that the country will work together with the international community to create a better future for the mankind. In his speech delivered at the meeting, Wang said that the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development has opened a new chapter in global development cooperation. China's shoulders great responsibility in ensuring no one is left behind. Wang stressed that realistic importance should be attached to the concerns of the developing countries and coordinated economic, environmental and social development should be promoted. Countries should firmly support multilateralism and the core role of the United Nations in the international system, Wang said, adding that effect 
proactive action should be practically taken to jointly deepen the global partnership for development. China follows a new development vision that features innovative and coordinated green and open development for the benefit of all to achieve high-quality development. China takes sustainable development as one of the basic state policies and comprehensively deepen the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. China will work together with the international community to achieve the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and create a better future for the mankind. Peruvian President Martin Vizcarra called for a way to achieve a peaceful solution to the deepening political and humanitarian crisis in Venezuela. Speaking at the United Nations General Assembly, Vizcarra said he had recently proposed ending the legislative and presidential terms of office a year earlier than scheduled and holding elections in 2020 in the face of opposition to his efforts to pass anti-corruption measures. Vizcarra said the proposal will be presented to Congress and must be ratified in a referendum. The U.S. House of Representatives will launch a formal impeachment inquiry into U.S. President Donald Trump over reports he sought foreign help to smear a political rival, setting up a dramatic clash between Congress and the White House that could spill into the 2020 presidential campaign. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced the inquiry after a closed-door meeting with Democratic lawmakers, saying Trump's actions appear to have undermined national security and violated the U.S. Constitution. Pelosi's change of heart followed reports that Trump had pressured Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in a July 25th phone call to investigate Democratic presidential front-runner Joe Biden and his son. The controversy came to light after the whistleblower from the U.N. from within the U.S. intelligence community Community lodged a complaint with an internal watchdog about Trump's conversation with Zelensky. Pelosi said the six congressional committees currently investigating Trump would continue with their probes as part of the inquiry. Trump has confirmed he had withheld nearly $400 million in U.S. aid to Ukraine but denied he did so as leverage to get Zelensky to initiate an investigation that would damage Biden. The actions of the, pro the, actions of the Trump presidency revealed... Sports news coming up next. The team from D Branch emerged champion of the Royal Brunei Police Force Inter Branch Football Championship for 2019. The final took place this afternoon at Hassan Abulkia Stadium Police Headquarters in Gadong. In the final match, D Branch defeated its opponents B Branch 1 0. Prizes were presented by Datu Paduka Siri Haji Muhammad Irwan, Bin Haji Hambali, Commissioner of the Royal Brunei Police Force. Also present was Pian and Datu Siri Pahlawan Haji Muhammad Jeffrey, Bin Pian and Haji Abdul Hamid, Deputy Commissioner of the Royal Brunei Police Force. The Brunei Mora District and Kota Ranger FC Club Football Organization Joint Cup 2019. The match last night saw a match in Group B between Dagang FT and MSN United, which was held at the Sungai Kebun Sports Complex. In the first half of the game, saw MSN United leads the match by 1-0 to Awang Huzami Haji Awang Tengah. Dagang FT equalised the scoreboard in the second half of the match to Muhammad Amni Muhammad Ali. The match ended with both teams with tied to one all draw. St. Petersburg, Munich and Wembley Stadium in London will host the three Champions League finals from 2021. According to the European football's governing body UEFA, Istanbul in Turkey is already scheduled to hold the final of the 2019-2020 campaign on May 30th at the Atatürk Olympic Stadium. The 2021 final will be the second to be staged in Russia after Moscow hosted Manchester United's penalty shootout win against Chelsea at the Luzhniki Stadium in 2008. Wembley will will be in 2023 will 
in 2023 be celebrating the 100 years since the opening of the original stadium in London. Seville will host the 2021 UEFA Europe Europa League final while Belfast will host that year's Super Cup. The expected general weather condition for Brunei Darussalam in the next 24 hours is mostly fair. Tonight, the weather is expected to be fair, but with chance of isolated thunder showers, sea is slight to moderate at 0.8 to point to 1.5 meter high and wind is from southwest at 5 to 15 kilometers per hour. Tomorrow morning the weather is generally sunny. Sea state is similar as tonight and wind is from southeast or northeast at 5 to 15 kilometers per hour. In the afternoon the weather is expected to be mostly fair apart from isolated thunder showers over inland areas. Sea state is slight to moderate at 0.8 to 1.2 meters. Wind is from northwest or northeast at 10 to 25 kilometers per hour. Walambo, Walambisawa. To conclude, let's ponder how this or tradition of Prophet Muhammad wasalam, as narrated by Muslim. Three types of people will be ignored by Allah on the day of reckoning. Ones who like to boast of their contributions to others, ones who sell their goods with curses and lies, and those who attire drags on the ground. And that concludes News at 10 for this evening. Have a very good night. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.